that became the presidential bloodline in America. And they're out of Germany. And all my colleagues knew that. They were calling them not uh, like the uh, little cookies, but they were calling them shirts. That was the nickname for the family that left Germany in 1937. Oh. Uh, that is Peter Ayer's information. And all the folk that came across to America from the uh, German place, uh, they were the global... Yeah, that's it. So you can the whole of it. Yeah, uh, I think, I think they, 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 they'd already gotten rid of... They'd, got, they'd already put... They'd already got out there, hadn't they? The, the, the main ones had already got out. Yeah, I think it, they went in '37. Uh, and uh, the Federal Reserve scams happened much earlier than that, but they continued to fight on those issues because the Russian Tsars were being murdered at the same time by the folk that were trained under Marx and Engels in London. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all of it is in the uh, horrendous movies about the Holocaust, uh, and that is... Uh, uh, Ralph Fiennes proclaiming that the people that he's about to shoot in the head are communists like Marx and Engels. Uh, and all of it is in Hollywood's ma uh, movie making, and that is Sheriff Peter Patterson's role in my life and my divorce. It's absolutely trivial what they've done, uh, but it's, it's uh, typical of what the Warner Brothers have done to the movie industry. Uh, and that is the uh, Nazis too, Kaiser Wilhelm and the uh, regime that used to live in his hunting lodges. Uh, they were chief master masons from Austria uh, right through the world wars. Uh, and that is the, then they emigrate to America, they change all the names and that is why Geli Merkel is the piss take about Geli Rabal being Betty Grable in Hollywood. It's uh, just a massive set of familial uh, war crimes. Uh, and I've known about it, and clearly you have too. Who, who told you about the, the chef? The chef? Yeah, so the chef family and the Bush oh. linkage yeah. and the... the uh, Stealing of Tesla's patents and everything that happened in that period. Well, they, form, uh, all they the formulated, I mean, at the same time, they formulated the CIA, the FBI, and all this lot as well, didn't they? So it's all a part and parcel of everything, isn't it? What, what's, yeah, that's right. What's, what about the, um, what about the uh, uh, Antarctica connection then? Who's, who's that? Is that? Which one? Adam? Discovering the South Pole. Yeah, Operation High Jump. There was a, um, there was the Reich down there, wasn't there? They'd set up a base down there. There's a lot of bases. Yeah. There. So, so the whole of it is just to keep the publicity on the new discoveries and the geographical finds, like the South Pole. What was happening at that time is that Titus Oates, who lost his toes in the Antarctic is actually a cleric in the Glorious Revolution uh, style uh, that was uh, the glorious bloodbath that is religion right around the world. And that is Titus Oates was the name of one of the clerics in London. Uh, and all of it is this, I've made videos on that in Dundee. Uh, and uh, it shows you that the gods, the ones that relied on gods, had to get amputations and cut their toes off. But the ones that relied on the uh, uh, what was the what were the two nations that were contesting that? So it was Scott of Britain yeah. against. Uh, yeah, I don't know who was it. Yeah, who was, was it? Sweden? Who? Was it Sweden? Not sure. 
but that's really what they do. That, that's the purpose of things like the Olympics, to divert the punter's attention from what is actually being stolen from society at that time. Uh, and I used to admire the Bush family for their capacity to make inspirational speeches and things, uh, but that is the uh, uh, almost certainly it's the killing of John F. Kennedy. Uh, and all of that, when you look at the inaugural events and what happened there and in that time, because I believe in the gods, when you watch what happens when the inaugurated president uh, is getting the applause from the massive audience, uh, you, you then see that uh, the Bush family got downpours uh, whereas Kennedy was under the sun forever, right through the inauguration event. Uh, it's, uh, and that's why I've become a sun god worshipper. Uh, yeah, it was the they, they was it. It was the son of the desert, wasn't it? The uh, the Laurel and Hardy ones, the Laurel and Hardy films. That was the son of the desert. Was that? That's the, right. And they they were they were the uh, piss takers that were. Dancing like Egyptians, yeah, and that is the linkage. That is the linkage to Kamal, to the families. What were the families that were alleged to be, or they were actually involved in the uh, the secret events that happened in America, uh, that led to the Bohemian Grove stuff, and Boris's attendance at all those event in the occultist venues, uh, that was, what was the name of the woman that was in oh, Oxford? Yeah, the, the, it was yeah. The, the wife, the wife of... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, that is the Max, Maxwell family, yeah. and that is them that Maxwell used to dance like a fucking Egyptian. Mm. And I believe it's the desert boy thing for all the folk that are, that's why I worry so much about John's reputation and what he's done in the banking sector. And when he has to hide that and cover it, he uh, repet repetitively uh, guns back to Katie Borden and what's happened in his own constituency. And she is now running the role of Winston Churchill's uncle that was the MP for that region. And it's the it's the Dukes of Norfolk, and that was in the Thomas Moore movie, uh, the folk that got him beheaded. He was betrayed by Howard of Norfolk, and that is Michael Ancrum's family now, and he's my next door neighbour in the Borders, uh, and all of them have the capacity for greatness, but because everybody else gets topped, if it fails. Uh, they are not going to do anything about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I didn't care about the pretzel thing, other than the fact that George W. Bush was afflicted by it. But now that I understand what exactly it is, I'm desperately keen to get it out because it happened uh, before World War One was sparked, and it happened before World War Two was created for all the same motives by all the same families. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the linkage to the fat cats on Forbes is the massive linkage that almost everybody cares about between the Forbes rich listers and the Holocaust. Every one of them is a profiteering family. The bloodlines are all in the, at the same game, uh, creating their wealth through the poor people that were usually Jewish and had to be in the gas chambers and then eventually they were turned into gas themselves. Yeah, and the Rothschilds did it all. Do you, I mean, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't care that the, there was a gas, I don't believe there was any gas. I don't believe that there was any gas. Not from the information. You think fear mongering? I, I believe it was a staged event. It was an event. I mean, I do believe there was people killed. Obviously, it's just like every every other false flag. It was a it was something that was used, you know, 
I mean, at the end of the day, it was all about creating Israel. I believe the, 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 the wars was about creating Israel. And uh, so it was all a part and parcel of the same plan. Because they created... Even although the Rothschilds are from the Ashkenazi Jew place that is Ukraine. Yeah, well, this is the difference, isn't it, between a Jew? What's a Jew and what's a Jew? What's a Jew that says he's a Jew, that is really the synagogue of Satan? This is what I'm trying to say. I mean, what is the difference? What is the difference, you know? I mean, what define a Jew? Define a Christian. You know, what, what is it? You know, they, we're all men and women at the end of the day. So it's just their choice of what they're cl classified. Well, usually you're quite philosophical on even the religious options that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're in touch with all of that. Uh, and uh, But, but the, the films that were made about it and the locations that they were made in are nothing to do with the history of religion. It's all uh, the Ashkenazi Jews are from Ukraine, and that is where the Rothschilds emerged from. That is where uh, Genghis Khan emerged from, uh, and all of it is the then the cover-up and the power of the pen and the media, yeah. uh, and that is what the families are now protected by even although they're massive war criminals. But when you look up the Forbes rich list, you find the companies, you find what they manufactured, and you find where they had their factories. All of it is the death camps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sure there was, I mean, for sure there was death camps, and I believe it was for killing the people that they wanted, and I believe that they stole the, the, the wealth of the Jews, the Jews that were the, the wealthy Jews, they stole that. I mean, so... But at the same time, that they used the Jewish religion as, as their own saviour. So they made them to be the victim to create... That, that's, this is my opinion, you know. The First World War got them the Balfour Treaty, yeah? So that got them the Palestine. The Second World War got them patri patronised to, to, uh, to Israel and took them over there. But so, we've already discussed the bungs that they got to get those treaties through. So Balfour... It's the same, the with, the the, it's the same with the six. On. It's the same with the six million because this was all down to prophecy. They was they was trying to play out a prophecy, and they had to have six million killed. And I always say this. I mean, just on the simple, on the simple logic. They were trying to play out of what? The prophecy in, the, in their books. It was said that there was, there was six million. When six million died, then then forms Israel, the true Israel. So I mean, oh, right. I I personally believe that six million will be the people that are right now we're talking about. They are the ones that need to be removed before Israel because Israel is the people. Israel has always been the people. We, we the, the people are Israel, not, not a country. And, and if you remember on the, on the bloodline tree that we had and we've profiled together, the Truman uh, got a massive, it uh, was $2 million, which was like a trillionaire event in today's currencies, uh, he got $2 million for uh, making that treaty viable and signing it off. It was all paid for by bribes. Yeah. Uh, and that is at the bottom of that family tree that I published with you, yeah. uh, with the Perses and everybody that's in it. Uh, and uh, the Perses gardener is in the building at the moment. He will not declare that he is the Percy's gardener, but he's made dozens of videos on the Poison Garden, uh, and I've got them all on my archives. Uh, and at the end of his little scenario, he tells you that uh, the, the folk from the BBC ask him what you can do with this knowledge, and he quite openly says, oh, well, if you want to get rid of your wife, this is a perfect method. That's the poison garden in Anik, and they killed their own brother in this generation. That's Henry of Anik uh, and Algernon taking over. Uh, and that all happened uh, when I was just being evicted from my house. Uh, and that was the story I told the day that the police stormed in and chucked me out of that house. It's absolutely crooked, mm -hmm. uh, and all of the families that have been corrupted right through world history, that is Perseus the poet of Rome. Oh, yeah.
uh, and it's Harry Potter, and all of it is the biggest rating movies that have ever been made. And I must confess that I was forced to go to them by my children and my wife. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing how corrupted it is. And the Jewish versus Christian thing and everything that happens is at the hub of it. Uh, but when you, you talked about the, the roles of the people in society this morning, and you, I think you've got it sussed that they are all the equivalent of those people that were sitting in judgment of the war criminals, but the war criminal rankings make it, it's like a sieve, it, it filters out only the ones that are not in the Rothschild class as criminals and murderers and allows the other ones to go to the wall. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I think that everybody that is sensible enough to see all of that, but what has happened since I moved to Coldstream, that's John Lamont's constituency, and every time I write anything on the internet, he then accuses me of anti-Semitism. Every video I've made which is evidence-based gets knocked off the internet at that point. And that is John Lamont's friends in the social media with the other contenders for the MP or for the MSP's job up here. They all have to change their names because they're all corporate owners and I've got all the corporates that they own on my listings. Uh, but what they do now is they know that Wikipedia is a free publication method. You don't necessarily need to be telling the truth. Uh, and what they did was to pretend that there was a man called Wheelhouse, which was their opposition in the election. That's Paul Wheelhouse in this constituency. They banned every one of my Holocaust videos, even although I got the birth dates and the names of the families that were in the Jewish ghetto mm -hmm. in Frankfurt, which is the Rothschild Central Bank for Europe, even today. Yeah. It's uh, so that I mean, the whole going on going on the the, the, the fact of, of the I mean, there's one simple thing because we all we can all do mathematics, yeah. We all know that you know if if there's six million and if there's some numbers taken away, there's going to be less than six million. Now, in 1992, Auschwitz had to convert what they had said as 4.1 million people were burnt and killed and gassed in, in the Auschwitz. They had to reduce it down to 1.5 million. Now, that's 2.6 million less. Now, if there's 2.6 million less, why would they still be saying 6 million if 6 million wasn't so important? And why did they say 6 million all the way back from uh, 1913? They'd been putting 6 million in the newspapers all the way through up to it. So yeah. it was all about, so we know, I mean, just with the simples, just keep it simple as I do, you know, you know that there's something that doesn't add up, that something's not correct here. Then you had, um, what was his name, Ernst, Ernst, Ernst Zundel, who exposed the fact and sent that American, that the only man that was qualified to go and inspect the Auschwitz and Burkamp to see if the, the camps was possible, see if it was possible. And he came that, that anything could have been gassed, and you know if gas could have ever been used. And he came back that the only building that could have been used was the building that they used to defumigate the uh, the bedding and the clothing because of the lice, because of you know, to destroy all the lice, which was what yeah. the, which what killed the people. That and starvation. The starvation killed the people because of they they put all restrictions from getting food to them, and then there was the diseases as well. That, that you know that what was it? I forget what the, the disease that killed them all. Yeah, but that's where they all died. Not I'm not. That's what I'm saying. That makes more sense to me. That's pr more. Pr that's provable that those are the things that actually happened, rather than gas. Because he went when he went over there. This was. So you approve, you approve of Willy Weasel in Davos every year? Say that again. You approve of Willy Weasel, the victim of the death camps, uh, being at Davos every year. I don't, I don't, well, do I, do I approve of it? I, Confirmation I, that the people that launched the Holocaust are the richest in the world yeah. and the dead are their labor. Yeah. 
Well, that's yeah. what I believe there was. There were there was labor camps. I mean, I think that I think yeah. find there was probably more killed. The Germans, there was more Germans killed in the camps afterwards than Christian white Christian. That's what it was. Same with Russia. Same with Russia too. You know, when you look at it as, as yeah. what, what it, in reality, the, the real Holocaust was not the Holocaust you get told. You know, the Holocaust that you got told is that was what that was a created. Again, you're talking about anti-Semite. How can you even call it an anti-Semite because they're not Semites? You know. And at the end of the day, yeah, <laughs> let's let's call it true. They've used they who's the ones? You see, follow the money. Who who gets who gets the best out of this? I mean, they've got they've got, they they're the ones that've got the best out of this. They got a country, they got their own country now. I mean, they're only formulated. Who, who, who are we? Who are In this they? Case? Who, who owns who owns Israel? Who, who is Mister Israel? Mister Rothschild. Mister Rothschild. Yeah, yeah. Start off. He is Israel. And several Palestinian leaders were assassinated in the lead up to all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's. I believe that the biggest scam, though, is taking the attention away from Northern Europe uh, and taking it into the Holy Lands, because the Rothschilds are nothing to do with the Holy Lands. They are just Ukrainian billionaires and serial killers as warriors. Yeah. Uh, and that is the massive Ukrainian scams. They've got the boss at Ukraine uh, was Timoshenko, and she's on the Forbes rich list. And the real reason that she's on the Forbes rich list is that she's one of the poor Forbes rich people. Uh, and the real Gennady Timoshenko is Russian, and he's several trillion above her on the listings, but nobody knows he exists. That is how they do it, and that is what the New World Order are busy doing every day of the week. Yeah. And I've met many of them and talked to them. Uh, even Gerald Grosvenor, uh, in the period where he was pretending to have died, he used to talk to me in Dundee, and he owned the casinos in, in Newcastle that I used to go to for my dinners and things. Yeah. And he's a really nice man, and he could save the world and turn it all to good but because there's a massive syndicate and they cannot predict how they will all react yeah. but they've all got the atomic uh, button to press yeah. yet it could lead to extinction at any time uh, and that is how it's always been and that is why Schwarzenegger and the fourth richest man in the world are with Jacob Rothschild as they plan the next scam there is no integrity, there is no goodwill, there is not even a good thinking process in the current parliamentary methods that we have. Yeah. It's, so, I mean, what, yeah. where, I mean, where does, because, I mean, obviously you've got the Swiss, you've got the Swiss, you've got the Swiss, you've got the Octagon, you've got the, the Knights of Malta, you've got all these, that's what I'm trying to say, there must be all, one way or other, all colluding. Who's, who's the, you know, these families, these 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 families, there must be at the end of the day. Yeah, that's, that's the Glass Steagall Act and everything that Jacob Rothschild did, and that is why I've been exiled from my family because I exposed it all. Uh, and that is my. I used to live and work in Basel in Switzerland, and that is the massive pistic that Prince Charles is allowed to be the director of the Bank of International Settlements in that place. It looks like a Dalek because his companies are called Dalek, Prince Charles of Windsor. Yeah, and Camilla's a decent person. She's scared shitless every time I make a word on the internet because she knows that her brother was a mafia operative in Africa for Morgan Bank, and that is the, that is the stealing by the World Wildlife Fund her brother was the president of it. That's the killing of the African elephants. Juan Carlos's need to gun down the rhinos, and all of it is Juan Carlos's need to cover the fact that he is the father of the current regime that are going to be the kings and queens very, very soon. And they actually murdered their own mother. <laughs> So 
know what I mean? It, uh, when you, when you, I mean, I've, I swear they're either, they're either, if they've either had it beaten out of them or there is a, there is a, there is a, because I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been told whether it's true or not or not, but I, I could well believe it that one in 25 people, you know, they say is born that's uh, got no zero empathy. They're void of the gene. They don't care. They're psychopaths or the potential. Well, they are psychopaths, but yeah. they've got the potential to be anything because they don't care. And I uh, just seem well, to think that just, these families are that. Families that succeed generation after generation are actually the most evil families in the world. For sure. Uh, now that I've learned that and you know who they are, you know that you need to look at their number plates and see who the next person is that they are intending to assassinate. Yeah. It's my sister's on the list already. Yeah, and they're all very friendly when you meet them for the first time. Uh, but they are also friends of Rothschild, yeah. uh, and they are running everything that happens now. Uh, even the post office is run by Sassoon for generations, and that is Sassoon that took over uh, Asia using the opium method uh, to, to get everybody into junkie mode. Uh, and that is the Sassoons uh, that dragged me into India to see what it was like. And it's totally evil, and I visited their mansions, but that is the family that married into Rothschild and look exactly like the Jew that was Arius Calpurnius Piso. Uh, and they are the world's billionaires because all of them become allies of Rothschild in territories that they've not yet conquered. Yeah. So that is Sassoon uh, and the takeover of the whole of China and India and all of them were done, uh, all of that was done by drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And being a fellow of the pharmaceutical society, I care about that stuff too, uh, but it is totally for cash and genocide, and that is totally what happened over 200 years. And the man that signed the treaty in India, where the elephants are now rare species, was Mr. Eli Poob. <laughs> Don't make it up, could you? Don't make it up, mate. That's why China, um, China, China themselves right now, they've got a, you know, that, that's what's happening right now. I mean, with China, because they've got a, a big vendetta to come back on for the same reasons for what they did to them. So the whole meaning of life now for everybody that's on Forbes is to get richer and richer and richer. But because I've been so active and you guys have too, the, the, the net wealth that they now have is plummeting downwards, uh, and that's because they cannot manage a genuine economic society uh, and keep it in the black. Yeah, well, that's that's the other thing of Corona. What Corona is going to do? Because I mean, that's the reset. Because as you know, well, I don't know if you do know that that the money is only backed by confidence, belief. There is no there is no value. So these people that have done all this, they've done all this for their trillions and billions or whatever it is, but it's trillions and billions of nothing. And once people... Yeah, that's right. The, the inflation ruins the prospects. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's massive. Uh, and you don't have to be a genius to run the Bank of England, but what they've done is to appoint a man that is from Hollywood's history... Uh, and he's called Bailey, and that is the man that was in the James Stewart film, that It's a Wonderful Life, yeah, yeah. and Bailey is the new boss at the Bank of England, like in that movie. Yeah. And it's totally evil, like in that movie, uh, yeah. and it's, uh, it's always the same families. <clears throat> it was the same fight he was having as the same fight that we're having now in that movie as well. It's exactly the same. And like I, well, I mean, at the end of the day, what I'm is living, what all these people in have done all the, now. Sorry? I'm living in Colstrom now, and it's just five miles away from a, the place where I nearly died in a car crash, which is called Birgham. And that is where Longshank signed the treaty, declaring that Scotland will never, ever be a kingdom again. 
-hmm. Yeah, he conquered Berwick and he conquered all the way up to Inverness. Uh, and that is the Longshanks that is in the movie. I forget the actors that played the role. But it's all totally that, corrupted. What was that? Uh, Rob Roy? The, the movie Rob no, no, Roy? No, no. It was Longshanks was uh, Thingaby the first. Oh, uh, Braveheart. Yes, Braveheart. so that's right. So, yeah. And he had he had three brothers, uh, or there were three people in the bloodline, and that was Princess Isabella, and she got married a couple of times, and she was absolutely disgusted with what happened, and she actually is alleged to have murdered one of the gay boys that are portrayed in the Braveheart movie. Mm -hmm. You remember they used to, uh, eventually Longshanks chucked you in over the wall and bounced him off the pavement below the turrets? You must have seen that bit. I've seen the film, but it's a long time ago. <laughs> it's been a long time ago. All, all I know is, George, all I know is this, mate, is the fact that when, when, when the shit hits the fan and the full truth becomes apparent, all these people we're talking about right now, yeah, all they did it for was they sold their soul for toilet roll because that's what that them pieces of paper are worth. So can you guess can yeah. you guess where the, the Treaty of Birgium is the signature that Scotland will never be a kingdom again and that we're gonna be in England's thrall forever? Guess who they've twinned it with. Guess what the twin town is for Birgham that was the icon for Scottish freedom and when Longshanks conquered it with the help of the home family that are my hosts in the region now, guess what they guess where they have twinned Birgham with in America? For a laugh. And it's the same as the Chancellor uh, of the Exchequer. He's George Bailey's enemy. Yeah, guess what they have twinned Birgham with? It's now Bedford Falls, which was the hometown for James Stewart in that beautiful movie that makes everybody feel happy and good that Christmas is actually something to celebrate rather than it being the killing of every global pagan that used to walk this earth. <laughs> And it's not really funny, but that is what the twin town is for Birgham. It's it's Bedford Falls in America. And that is where James Stewart lived in the movie that both of us like. <laughs> uh, so, do you want to continue with the... I could still do to find more data on what the family got up to and what their, what their ranking was. But since I started to invade the internet and look at the Austrian almanac for its nobility, they, <laughs> there's virtually none of the families that are prepared to actually reveal what their names were, where their territory was in that Austrian almanac. It's all been shut down and decimated that way. Yeah. Uh, I told you the other day that nearly every person that is in the British Parliament building is descended from that European nobility, uh, and they're all from the Habsburg bloodline. They're either from Habsburg or they're from Windsor, uh, and some of them are from the Kaiser families, and all of it is a massive spread of those families that are in the wars, that are global wars, with their own cousins. And that is Queenie's story, and that is why Greg Hallett is dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so the, but to, I, to keep him alive there, they must have a plan. They must have a plan for him. They well, I believe it, the plan is just to keep launching Greg Hallett's until people get bored with it. And we talked about the, your mate from New Zealand this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told you that the whole of that is ancient history. It's in the Holy Lands that Holofernes was killed by Judith, who slit his throat. And that Judith is a spy uh, in the Holy Lands. 
uh, and that is the killing of Holofernes, and that is the Punch and Judy show that everybody watches when they go into the beach or into those ancient places that are run by folk like Percy, who's from ancient Rome yeah. and has a poison garden for a laugh, killing of his own elder brother right in front of the world's press. And that's why Lord uh, Stevens of Kirkwelpington is now the uh, he's now the sheriff for that region because Lady Jane Grosvenor, that topped her brother-in-law, not Grosvenor, uh, Lady Jane Richards, who's married to Percy, uh, she was the Lord Lieutenant for Northumbria, even when they were murdering her brother-in-law. And his aide-de-camp is in the room next door. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It, 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 beggars, it beggars belief, really. I mean... Well, I've, I've got nothing left to lose, so I'm quite prepared just to carry on exposing it all. Uh, and uh, I was quite stunned by the magnitude of that pretzel joke, because it, it, I was a head of department trying to keep the university on a stable keel. Uh, and when the news came through, all the Yankee employees in New Zealand were absolutely distraught that that had happened to their president. But that is the joke that their president has launched both of the world wars, yeah, based on the German allegiance, uh, and that is uh, that is World War One and World War Two for the same simple pretzel joke that is just the family tree. And when I discovered it, I realised how stupid I've been for all that time since it happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they're not. They're not. You, you, you know. I mean, did you know? I mean, be it true it was, whether it stands for it or not. But Nazi stands for National National Socialism and Zionism. The NA stands for National Socialism. The ZI stands for Zionism. Yeah. Well, that is what John Patterson and I discovered yeah. when John yeah. was still able to look at the Internet Archive, and he said that what was happening was that uh, Hitler was turning out to be like a communist and a menace to the family that is Rothschild that run the world already at that time. And that is why uh, he, was, he was not the favorite. And all of that stuff, John told me that he had, or I can't remember, he had 18 or something published documents on the Internet Archive, and when I made the video with Sean Maguire that afternoon, there were none left. Yeah. <laughs> but that was because Hitler tried, as a socialist, to turn over what the Rothschilds did. And if you've ever seen the images of what Rothschild did in Frankfurt, that is the massive factory for A.G. Farben, that they used to manage and run, it could produce enough gas to kill the world's population 15 times over. Yeah, and that is when they were, uh, when they lost the war in inverted commas, because when you look at Europe and the land masses that had been taken over by the, uh, not the allied nations, but the, what was the other lot? Allied and oh, no. uh, Axis. So the Axis nations got a massive enhancement of the territory that was theirs, and the victors in the war, their land mass went down dramatically. Uh, but the AG Farben was run by Rothschild right up to the end of the war. They then gave it to the person that was in the war crimes inquest chair seat. That's Prince Bernhardt of the Netherlands and of Lip Biesterfield. Yeah. Yeah, and that he then 
took over as the boss there uh, and uh, Tyson is the other name that is the biggest name in world history and if you watch the Valkyrie movies you'll see that the woman that is Francesca when her husband gets lined up and shot by the regimes that were trying to free Germany uh, with Hitler's help uh, that is the massive pistic that Fritz Tyson is the biggest war criminal that ever lived on this earth and they are still trading in uh, steel yeah. all over the world and the other new companies are just like the establishment of that holocaust because they used the cheap labor that was there and in this case they actually moved to uh, to um, America to get it done uh, and all of it is the totally ruthless and what the papers now do is to cover it all up because folk like Rupert Murdoch are the biggest fascists on this earth and his family are too I told you this morning about the Beverly Hillbillies mansion that only lasted for a fortnight because I published it and all of a sudden they panic and they shit themselves and that mansion is sold to somebody else but that was the that was the massive joke that Lackland Murdoch took over that massive building and that is Lackland that was King John the first that is the body in the Robin Hood movie and the body in what is the yin about uh, play it again Sam oh, yeah, yeah. Castle Blank <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So he's the actor that plays uh, the leader in North Africa of one of the nations, which was actually owned by France. And that is all in those family trees too. It's just totally chaotic. And you'd think that now that we can actually think about taking man to the moon and things like that, that things could only get better. But because of the Rothschilds' greed and capacity to kill with impunity, uh, that is right through the war crimes inquests. And everybody that is on my lists and on my videos earlier on, that is Lord Oaksey of Liverpool. That is the oak tree under which every pagan was killed in the name of the non-existent Christ. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting and now the popes are the richest people on this earth yeah and the ones that came out of Hitler youth are the German chancellors yeah, yeah. yeah and the, 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 did you get the magnitude of the Lubavitcher thing that is William the Conqueror coming to Britain and launching the first banks in London and that is the Lubavitcher families with the Jewish hairdos down to their shoulders yeah. uh, and that is the Julius movie and all of them are prepared to kill the rivals for the wealth that is in the Norman banks and that is the Norman banks that are run from the Normandy Peninsula and that is the Fallies Castle families that become the th Thunderbirds and the characters on the end of the string are the Bush actors that are the biggest war criminals in world history right. uh, along with Tyson who was their cousin and he's the man that paid Hitler yeah that is the big steel industry in America and they're all roaming around in Coldstream at the moment uh, and uh, it's just totally pathetic mm -hmm. uh, and Mont is the MP for here and he's totally in breach of the UK constitution for way over a decade and his mate Michael Moore uh, was chatting last night uh, and Michael <coughs> Moore had to resign because he ran uh, in the elections that uh, that got uh, John Lamont into the uh, into the Parliament building in England. Uh, he was Michael Moore was thrown out of office because he was the uh, 
Secretary of State for Scotland at that time, and he used to fly in and out of Iraq when they were trading the oil there, uh, and he ran assassination bureaus in Glesky, and me and John Patterson and folk like that published the facts on that, uh, and all of them, like Aristotle and Onassis, Greek, Greece is supposed to be a civilized place, Onassis had uh, a massive number of brothers, his, uh, his wife was called, uh, it's in the Bible, uh, Gethsemane, yeah. <laughs> and that is the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus had to sleep on the park benches. Mm -hmm. Well, he ended up with Jackie, Jackie, uh, Jackie Kennedy, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. She was Kennedy's last wife, but that's not true either, because there was a man that was a diamonds magnet in South Africa, and he was something's man. Uh, he owned the diamond wealth in what would have been the World Wildlife Territory. Uh, and it was Jackie O's third husband was Templesman. You heard of him? No. Look it up on the internet. She's she's he is her third husband, uh, and uh, all of it is in the same part of South Africa that is Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And guess what that is in ancient European history? I wouldn't know. A Petan dynasty of Frankish France and the serial killing killer that was Charlemagne. Just watch the song by Blondie that is Charlemagne and you'll realize that she's in the bloodline tree for the biggest killer that was a religious icon. That is Charlemagne. Uh, and the taking down of all the great uh, pagan empires uh, by their massacre. It's uh, totally uh, ruthless. Yeah. Uh, and that is the Capetan dynasty in South Africa uh, that is uh, Cape Town. Yeah. And Lily Allen, Lily Allen goes there and makes a video uh, called Air Balloon, and she then is circulating the earth with a man called Jesus on his cross, hoping the pair of them, that's Lily Allen, mm -hmm. to get home to heaven. And it used to hang in the supermarket in my hometown. Uh, and all of it is a massive pistic against every war dead and every pagan that worshipped the sun god or the icons that they found inspirational in their mountains. And that is the Lorelei thing. Uh, and even the, the folk that sang about bringing down the Berlin Wall, uh, they sing a song called Lorelei, and it's absolutely beautiful. And every time I watch it, you remember the folk in the Great Escape movie escaping to the Rhine River Valley, getting onto the boats, and they were almost home again. Uh, and that is uh, Steve McQueen. Yeah. And he's directly descended from Queen Victoria. <laughs> That's why in the movie they made gin in the death camp, in the prison camp, and they celebrate. What is the day of celebration in the Americas? July the 4th. Yeah, that's it. So, so they got the gin, they pranced around the, the, the prison camp, and that is their joke. Uh, I think... Uh, Steve McQueen was Schultz in the movie, and all of them are descended from either the Kaisers or the uh, Hohenlohes and all the uh, massive families that uh, are Frederick the Great, and all oh, it's just endless. Yeah. Uh, none of them can live in peace, but now you'd think that it would be possible. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the Rothschilds. The time, are the time, the time is coming. The light is the light is being on, turned on, so there's not going to be anywhere for them to hide. Have you ever done any research? Just I mean, it was just a thought when you were talking earlier on. 
because of the Nuremberg Treaty, yeah, the Nuremberg Trial, yeah. Those Nuremberg yeah. trials obviously ciphered out the ones that they didn't want and the ones that they did want. Let the free ones go and the, the ones that the bad ones go and the good ones they got rid of. So who was well, who was controlling? Who was the uh, ones? You who... must realise that the the films that are made in Hollywood are made to portray those evil people running the inquests, and that is the massive movies that are Godfather one to three, yeah. and the Godfather's trial. He gets a man over that is his brother from Italy or something. And all they need to do is tell the person that's in the, what do you call the little box that you sit in when the jury are trying to suss you out? Witness box. Yeah, so he's in the witness box and the judge uh, says to him, there's a person just joined us that you might know already and that is his brother and that is Frank Pentangeli that they eventually allowed to murder himself, to commit suicide in his own bath. And I'll never forget it, all the names of those characters are actually the inquest chairs that were picked by Rothschild. They never touch it. And IG Farben, when the gas lorries now come up the high street that I'm living in and looking out of the window on, IG Farben has now become, that is the biggest gassing company that ever lived. Guess what the structure of the building was that the gods had to look down on it? What was the structure, do you think? I can't. I'm trying to think now. Every people that ever lived. So the building was like the sun with the rays coming out oh, onto yeah, the grass. Yeah. All right. And that oh, is the that is the Rothschild war crimes. They did not call themselves Rothschild. They were Bears in that. That's spelled B A Y E R or B A U E R. And all of it is the capacity to kill the population of the globe 15 times over. Uh, and then when Bernhardt was declared to be a Nazi, he had to take over the ownership and leadership of that. And he lived right in his 90s. And he died in the early noughties. It's absolutely crooked. So we could make umpteen videos, but I reckon what you think is the most important information. I, I would like the whole world to understand that Bush launched through their own family bloodline both World War One and World War Two when they were living in Germany. And thank you for confirming that Peter Ayer's information is in your head too. All the documents on that have all been torn to pieces. You can't get any of them now, except the ones that were uh, the Bushes when they were stealing Tesla's patents. Uh, they started making cartoons called Curious George. Wow. And all of that is published on my, on my Facebook pages and my internet archives. Uh, no, the internet archives, but my just my YouTube channels and things. Uh, but that is that is how the decisions were made at Nuremberg. And when they had the massive floods in uh, America uh, just a, a year and a half ago, uh, that was uh, Harrison County is where the floods happened, and Harrison and Harris. And everything that you have in the syndicate is the same sick joke that we're the war criminals, but we're going to get other people into the dock. Uh, and that's that's why Lord Oxy of Liverpool was such a notorious person. He was the war inquest chair for Liverpool, where Hitler was trained on the quiet. And his relatives are getting really jumpy and chatting to more who are on the street corners about all of that. And my role in it as an exile that's having to pay £50 a day to get to sleep at nights off the streets. 
<laughs> At least I did not die in Birgham like so many other Scots' hopes have done. Yeah, it's cool. absolutely crooked. Well, it's, uh, it's, as I say, I mean, it's strange what uh, life puts in front of us. I mean, at the end of the day, like I say, I mean, end of the day, speaking, speaking the truth, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a double whammy. You see, I don't they they don't I don't well I so far the only way they they can do it is by getting people to do it. I mean, on on myself, yeah, they they slated me, they slaughtered, they went round and spread all these bullshit rumors like they um, put my house on google um, google maps and they sent messages they, they, they sent messages to everyone uh, people, there was people coming to me saying god do you, want, do you want to hear what this guy's saying about you so they just try to get somebody to come and take you out they just want some other person to to come and do the dirty work for you but i mean yeah. obviously they you know so the police are totally in, implicated in everything that happens and that is them the in the part in putting the initials on the on the plates that declare who their next victim is going to be. For sure, yeah. And it's yeah, very I, I, I know I know other people that have read that, especially with uh, you know Jamantra and stuff like that, and they can see all these things. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not that mindset, but for sure they have to tell you everything's in plain sight. That's why they've had. Well, to, you know, that's what they do. What they do, isn't it? But the whole of it is when I first released the information that uh, was the start of the coronavirus, the information was simply which families in the world that are still in politics were related to Hitler. Mm. And that's why that picture that you're seeing now is in my portfolio. And that is the families that are in Hollywood. That is... Uh, what was the uh, John Cleese made a comedy, a fish called Wanda. Fish called Wanda, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and all, almost all the cast are Nazis, and that is the biggest hit in video that I ever published. Within two weeks, it had six thousand views, and that is the that is the concept that Boris Johnson is a Nazi, that the uh, president in America. Is a Nazi. He's in the top five mafia families in New York. Uh, and the uh, Archbishop of Glasgow is called Tartaglio. Have you seen the Godfather family uh, movie? Yeah, one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. So Tartaglio is the man that was smoking the cigarette behind the bar when the fat guy came to try and execute the owner of the bar. Uh, and so they pinned the the park person that was going to try and kill the owner to the bar top with a nail, mm -hmm. and that is Tartaglio is the man that shot him after that had happened. Tartaglio is still the Bishop of Glasgow in Scotland. <laughs> And that's on my website, and the pictures are all there of the Hollywood movie and the characters in it and the roles in that. Right. And I actually met him at one of the openings of the new Parliament building in Edinburgh that was held at the end of Princess Street. I was at the meeting that day in the church that Tartaglio was blessing Hollywood with. And Salmon and all the celebrities were there. And it's totally unbelievable that all of that is commissioned by Rothschild and paid for by them. But now you can understand why they're not short of the dosh. It's <laughs> uh, and I, I reckon what the world believes now about the, about the Holocaust and things. But the, it's, it's quite plain when you see those pictures that I sent you this morning. Yeah. It's all just a massive cover up. And if you're a celebrity, you need to make it plain that you're a nice celebrity like Lord Jacob Rothschild that does not personally turn on the gas. Yeah. 
Well, this is, this is the other thing about it. I've seen it's they, there's nothing that they can do to us. It's only what we're doing to ourselves. All they can do is control the mind, you know, and that's what they've got. They've right. got control of the mind through the media, through the film, through everything else. They control. You know, you control the mind through fear, through everything else. Apart from there, obviously, yeah. the other sides of things, we see Tavistock Institute and the, and the mind, the MK Ultra and the Montauk programs and so on and so forth. But the point is, like, you know, it's the control of the basically people aren't the pe people aren't themselves people aren't themselves and they won't be themselves because as long as they're controlled with their mind and their minds being controlled by the external which is the matrix well i believe i'm really lucky because they could not hypnotize me i used to work in intensive care in the hospitals where the queen had her babies yeah, <laughs> yeah that's st mary's in london mm -hmm. uh, and Every time I used to go into the meetings on the molecular basis for consciousness, because we used to work with nerve cells and test tubes and plastic dishes and things, and look at the signals that were coming out of them, yeah. and how you could get complete anesthesia and complete lack of consciousness. Yeah. Uh, and you get the right waves at the right time that means that someone's able to wake up with that uh, regular movement. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, the, I used to go into congresses all over the world discussing such futile things uh, and the number of times that the speakers collapsed on the stage on the meeting on that theme it was absolutely amazing yeah, yeah all around the world uh, you could almost bet on somebody passing out on the stage as a specialist on the molecular basis for consciousness yeah. and it, it, it used to make me giggle and all of my colleagues used to think I was a turncoat and without any sort of uh, conscience but that is what happened mm. and that's well, why I, would, I, believe I, would, I would I would to be truthful I would I would consider myself now I mean, I, I brought myself out. I would say I was hypnotized. I'd been hypnotized in a sense all my life until I brought myself out of that hypnotism by seeing the facts. And the facts is what shocked me out of the trance or so to say, because that's, that's basically what it is, the programming. I, I, I broke the programming by seeing the facts. It was the facts and it's the facts that shocked me into realizing where this, is, this isn't what we... What I ever believed it was, everything I've been told is a lie, and now I have to go and find out the truth myself. So you know that was you know. So I well, I've always thought that we're the luckiest generation that ever lived on this earth. Well, I think but the internet that has done that, don't you? Don't you think that that's because yeah, I mean, yeah. every other year, every other generation. I mean, history is just repeating itself, as we know, and history can only repeat itself, and history will is doomed to repeat itself if people don't understand history. So. But what history? The history we're being told, or the history that you go and research for yourself. So, our my my parents, our parents, and our parents' parents, they had they had the they had the ability to say that they had nescience because the information wasn't there present for them. They had the ability to say that they had what nescience. They had nescience. What is that? Nescience means that the information isn't there for them to understand it, and so therefore the the, the facts aren't there for them to see the truth. But now you've got with the internet and the inter the, the, the information's there. So the only excuse they've got now is ignorance. Nescient, ignorance is the information's there and you don't pick it up. Nescience is the information isn't there, so you was, you, you would knew none the wiser. So they had the, the reason for it to go, but with the internet it was a double whammy, in my opinion, because it's given the information out there. Because I mean, I would never if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't know what I know now. If it wasn't, but do you, do you know, think that I cannot imagine a John Patterson that we both know that would just say, I don't want to be part of this battle anymore. I cannot believe that he has said that. No, he's, well, he's, 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 he's not what, is, what he said. What I mean, he's broken. You know, this is the thing, isn't it? This is the thing because we're all broken, aren't we? We're all, we're all wild. We're all animals. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all animals, mm -hmm. but we've been broken. We've been broken into conform. So, I mean, right now, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is because it's similar to the same thing. I mean, this is, this is what happens with anybody on, on, on that fucking, that's what that poison does to you. This isn't, that's what I'm trying to say. That's not John no more. 
Like that's, I'm not blaming him for what he's doing. He just can't see it. His head's, his head's fluff. He's in a fucking situation that he can't get anywhere. He's done all his speaking. No one's listening to a damn thing, no matter what he does. They're just ignoring it. And with them drugs that they've pumped into his head, he's like, you know, what can we fucking, what can I do? And he was like, you know, thanks for, you know, but I'm, I'm, I probably, that's me being a bit forceful to him really as well. Cause I'm probably being a bit forceful to him to understand so that he can see that he, the reason he's in there is the crime. The crime is they've, they've set up a counterfeit case. It's, it's all, it's all an illusion. And you walked into that trap and you opened your trap, which got you into the trap. And, and that's where you are instead of staying as King asking the question that, because, I mean, he's been told that Katie Bourne, uh, Ricky Dearman, uh, DC Steve Martin and um, Jilly Jones have made claims against him, that, that, that he's stalking them and so on and so forth. Now, I said to John, have you seen that? You've only been told that. I said, have you seen those affidavit and statements or those statements made under a caution? Have you actually been served any proceedings from a court? Have you got a case number? Have you got a case management file, which there would have to be for a record for a court case to exact actually exist? And I know now by asking, by asking the questions to the court for John, because John's asking the questions straight now, direct to the magistrate court, and they have said, doesn't exist. The case numbers, John asked, John asked his lawyer, and by the way, he put his lawyer on notice on the 8th of August, and then he asked that he had the same lawyer. He had the same lawyer, yeah, on the on the on the 9th of November, 8th of November, when that the got him put in prison. That lawyer 100 percent knows that that whole case is counterfeit. The lawyer knows. John asked the lawyer for two numbers, for asked for the case number. And you've got the documents, or he's got the documents? John's got the documents now. I've sent the the documents are sent in to John. He has he has got the um, the, uh, the the draft order that was given to the court to get them to to restore John's position because they've admitted the fact that there is no case in their own words. There, there is no case management file. Therefore, there's never been any uh, proceedings issued or served. There is no. Um, confirmation of service no receipt of service john's never received anything it's all an illusion and john's walked in there and he because because you're in it very often this is the point when you're in something you can't see it it's like it's like a, a game of chess when you're playing the game of chess you don't but when you're standing watching the person play the game of chess you can see where he's making the wrong move so john's in the game john's in the court building because he's thinking it's a court but it's not it's a building pertaining to be a court and the case is alleged case but it's, it's only pertaining to be an, a case it's not a, a genuine court case and it was a complete counterfeit case and his lawyer his prosecuting lawyers and the judge and the clerk and the whole lot of them were all in on the joke were all in on the counterfeit because it was never a genuine court case and they got him and they the police they're all in on it because they they were the ones that got him in there because katie Bourne, as you know they were the ones that get set it all up. Okay, rig it. We haven't got the evidence, the hard evidence, and we don't want him speaking because of the information that he'll put out. So we don't want a case. We just want him shoved away. So they've shoved him away. Oh, by the way, the court also confirmed in writing that, number one, there's never a case or anything, but they gave me some other information. It was very strange, really. But in it, to cut a long story short, yeah, it said on one of the points was custodial limit. Yeah. In other words, his custody time limit, they could hold him no longer, was the 7th of May 2020. So they ejected him from the prison and they stuck him in a mental health ward. They couldn't capture him in a mental health ward on the July, on 2nd of July, because when they did, they had to eject him. They tried to get him in there again. They ejected him. So he's twice been into a mental health ward. They've rejected him. But the only way they could get him into a, a mental health ward was via the hospital, uh, via the prison. And then they, they slowly wormed him into it when his custodial time had run out, according to was it you that told me, their own mouth. Was it you that told me that the loads of the people that are referred to the case cannot speak English properly? 
they number one right. well the, the way the court systems work or the bar association work because how it actually works is it's it's all it's all commercial it's commerce right there is there is no law there is no what we believe or what people would say was common law and so on and so forth because it's, if it's if in law right there's a victim no victim no crime that's that's law, yeah. You've you've got to have caused some harm, loss, or injury against a man or a woman, yeah, and that therefore there's a victim, and that victim has taken you, as it's meant to be pertained with what's happened to John. But the other side is how the bar association works and how all the courts are working. They're all working in commerce, so they work on your legal fiction. Which they're all the, working in on, commerce. In commerce, yeah. This yeah. this is all in commerce. They don't work on you as the man. They work on you as a person. And a person in the Black's Law Dictionary defines you as a corporation. So this is... Oh, what so this is capital letters at the beginning of your name and all that stuff. The capitalised name. The, the glosser. The Latin. The Latin. It's dog Latin. It's been yeah. glossed. Yeah. They've made you into a corporation. They've capitalised your name. They've capitalised you. Uh, the, the, they've, capital, they've, made a, they've made a secondary you. And if you ever answer to that, that's who you are. They capture you too. And John answered to that. That's the difference. That's why this. So this. So the, what? What they've actually. What? What courts actually do is they take the person. They take the person in. Now the bar association all swear on an oath that no fact will ever be heard or tried in a court of law. Therefore, yeah, can a dead man speak? Can a dead man speak? They can only take a fiction into the court. They will never take the man into the court. They will take the all caps guy. They've got to take the all caps guy in because that's the legal fiction. The legal fiction, by the way, was What's created. All cap? Pardon? What's all caps? All caps. The all caps. Letters. Uh, your, your, your surname, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Your surname is, is what they own. And they've capitalized it. Yeah. So, so. What, what they actually do is they will take the person, they'll take the person, because all these things, a person in, in our language, or in, in our language, which would be an actor's mask. Person stands for an actor's mask. So your person is your body corporate. The per, your, your, all, your, your surname, in all caps, is your body corporate. The man is something different. The man is, see, I am just, and, I'm Andrew. I'm Andrew, or I'm Andrew of the House of Divine, yeah, or I'm full colon Andrew, full colon divine, which stands for for the Andrew of the divine, the divine family, the family of the name. I am Andrew. Me, the man, is Andrew. The divine, yeah, is something that I have to cap, I take back ownership of, otherwise they own it because they've created it. They own what they create, your birth certificate. Everything that you create from your birth certificate yeah, is owned by them. Anything you use created from your birth certificate, i.e. driving license or passport, if you use that as identi to identify yourself with, you have just told them, number one, that you're a placenta, that you're dead and lost at sea. Yeah? Yeah, I remember, and Greg, you talked about Morris too, and that, that, it, that every person, once they had signed the or the birth certificate had been signed, that was just a, a draft for your life into the New World Order's team. Yeah. Uh, and you were you were worth about £100,000. And I reckon that they are declaring to me now that I'm not going to live long because my uh, cash is going to be uh, cut off. But the biggest joke of all... Uh, have you ever seen at the end of a law case uh, a kangaroo being hung from the court building? In other words, it's a kangaroo court. Yeah, well, they, they are. They are they, see, this is what I'm with what with what I'm doing right now with with Anthony because I I tried with John Winoa. I tried with John Winoa because within that flag, as the native originals, yeah, we have a say. We all have a say. It's a rule one, rule equal. We're on a we're on a level playing field now. The world is 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 flat, so to say, in the fact that it's a level playing field. Okay, so it's every everyone's equal, yeah. Therefore, this is how it should be, and it is if you know what you're doing. 
the rules controlled by knowledge and it's the lack of knowledge that makes us lose. They've got the knowledge, you know, and they mm -hmm. fool us. They fool us. That's what the courts are. The courts are a game of vocabulary, you know, and if you don't know the court, it's the same with the four corner rule. Did you know about the four corner rule? No, what is that? The four corner rule. Anything inside a box cannot be seen or heard. It's a different, so like a court, a court is like a tennis court, okay? Every, everything inside of four corners is, is its own game. So you're, you're, the court, by the way, the court is the paper. The court is the paper. And there's your four corners, okay? That's the court. Any, if there's yeah. a box, if there's another box on side the, inside this paper, that's a separate court and that cannot be seen on this paper. So anything inside of four corners cannot be seen. So when you go into a court, what is there? A jury box <laughs> and a witness box. Nothing you can be said of. It doesn't matter because nothing's seen or heard inside their boxes. So you'd have to remove all boxes within inside a court if you're going to ask for a fair hearing. Number two, the judge, the judge has got judicial immunity. Do you know why the judge has got judicial immunity? It's because he's never on the well of the court. He's on a different plane. He's sitting up above it. Yeah. Ah. So he's not sitting on the court level. Therefore, you can't get him done. And that's the reason he's got judicial immunity because he was never in the court. So he can just get up and walk out. So you, when you go into a court, you must first remove all boxes, remove all boxes. Yeah. So it's, it's all open. Yeah. This is the one. This is the one courtroom. There's no boxes, nothing being hidden from within inside this court. And number two, you have to remove the planes. So it's a level playing field. Now you turn the judge into a puny judge and I am my own judge. I'm my own competitive witness. And if he if he if he lies now within this court, he's he can get done. He can now get done. He can't run, you know, because he has no longer got the judicial immunity. But what you'll uh -huh. find is when you say this, the judge will get up and go out. And then when the judge comes back in again, it's a new courtroom. So you have to repeat it. Otherwise, now it's a new game. It's a new game. It's, it's just like going, hang on, no, I'll just, I'll just, I'm going to go back. Let's set him up again. So we just set the game up and now we're playing the game again. You have to, you have to re-stipulate it. Otherwise they're going to capture you. Then he'll get out and walk out. They can do it three times. I'm not too sure that the full, there are a lot of really intelligent people on that that know exactly the game, that know exactly how to beat them at their own game. You know, and there's been a lot of people that have done. But these are the people that then go into the private. See, this is the thing. We, we're meant to be in the private, meant to be keep stum about all this. This is what they say, and there's a lot of people that do, and they live a very happy life. They have access to their bonds and done, done all sorts of things. There's a lot of people out there that have done it. But me, <laughs> I'm one of those that I'm seeing horrible things that was done to me, horrible things that's being done to all the other people, and I can't stay, I can't stay silent because <sighs> it's wrong. It's wrong. I'm seeing wrong. And I'm in the, I'm a strong believer that, you know, the thing is, if you see something that's being wronged onto people, then you should help them. And I would like to think that if something's wrong that's being done to me and I was oblivious to it and I couldn't see it, it was right in front of face, just like John right now, just like John Patterson, he can't see it. He can't grasp because he's in the game what's actually been done to him. Yeah. So he, he, he's not. It's just not cognitive of it. That's all. Once that penny drops, it's gonna. He'll, he'll have his standing. He'll be able to stand in it. His standing is in, in the confidence. Knowledge gives you the confidence. He hasn't got yeah. the confidence because he hasn't got the knowledge that what's actually been done to him. And however I try to explain it to him, you know, it, it, you know, it's, I can only do. I can only, I can only do my best. I've done my best to try to explain to him because, like I say, I mean, at the end of the day, they've given us. They've given us, let's say, let's say, if, let's say, I mean, because when years ago, years ago, by yeah, you know, we used to sell, um, uh, used to buy and sell, you know, counterfeit uh, MOT certificates, uh, insurance cover notes. Let's just stick with those two for now. But there was many of things that were counterfeited. But as it progressed, the uh, the system figured a way out how to stop you being able to counterfeit them. They created it so that now when the garages MOT your car, they have to log it to the system on the computer. So it's on a computer record. So now mm -hmm. when the police pull you over, all they do is phone up, check your number plate. They can tell you whose car it is, 
whether it's MOT, whether it's insured, everything. It's all on the computer. So they've given us the perfect answer to capture them out. Because now when they're taking you to court, right? The perfect answer to catch what? To catch, to, to, they've shown us, they've caught the, the criminals out. They've shown you how to catch the criminals out. So revert it straight back on the criminals, the true criminals, which are these courts. Because these all these courts are being operated counterfeitly. They're not genuine courts. So all you've got to do is when they say to you, yeah, you've been taken to court and you get a court appearance, right? And you've been given, you get this letter come through, you've got to turn up to a court at a such and such date. It's got a court, it's got a case number on there. So if it's a genuine case, all you have to do is say, okay, then can I see my caseman file? Because on the caseman file, basically how a court would operate, let's say, Let's say, if, let's say if I was taking you to court, let's say if I was taking you to court, I would have to write an affidavit out under the penalty of perjury. I would have to put all my evidence that, 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 that uh, substantiates my claim. And if I had witnesses, I'd have their statements too, add it to it. Then I would take it to the court and I would lay that information in front of the court. Then the court would look at it, see that it was viable and it was, it was, all, it was all kosher. And then they would issue a, uh, a case number to that. They would, uh, they would issue the proceedings. They would serve the proceedings to you. And you would have to give a, they would have to get a receipt to say that you had been served the, the proceedings issued by the court. And there would be a caseman file, yeah, a computer record that will now keep everything about that case on a record. So any emails, any um, if if it was a uh, if and if it was a a civil case, they would I would have to file a fee, I'd have to pay a fee for that, which therefore there would also be a receipt, obviously because you've got to give a receipt if money's been given you've got a receipt. All this information would be on your caseman file, so it is so easy, absolutely a doddle to find out whether a case is a real case or whether it's a counterfeit case. Because if it's a counterfeit case, there's no case management file. And just like they can phone up to find out whether this MOT certificate is a counterfeit or not, because they can see if it's on the computer, because if it's not on the computer, what is it? It's either not been logged, yeah? So there's a, there's a clerical error, yeah? Which would be simple to find out because they could go to the garage. They could, there's, a, there's a trail. You can simply see that it was, obviously it was all done because they would have to have duplicates. Because there's, you know, an MOT doesn't come. It's, you know, there's like there's duplicates to it, so you would find out. But the point is, either way, there's a breach of procedure. Due process hasn't been followed, so there is no case to answer to. So John went in on that court case. He was told that he was um, accused of stalking Katie Bourne, Ricky Dearman. DC Steve Martin and Julie Jones, he was told, that's fucking hearsay. I said, John, have you ever seen, have you ever seen it? No, have you, have you ever seen a case man vial? Have you ever seen a case number? Because the two numbers that your prostitute gave you, that lawyer, the solicitor, the prostitute, the barrister you've got, I says, those two numbers that he gave you both had letters in it. Yeah, and the court has, has stipulated that no case file, case, uh, case number has letters in it. And they said the other number was a CPS number, and the other number that your lawyer's given you doesn't even exist. So what are you what 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 is there to what is there to now understand? Because the court's told you that, that it, there is no case. Now, if I if I if I counterfeited an MOT certificate or an insurance document. That's a crime. So why can John's attorney not hammer the court uh, for breach of protocol? Because he's in on it. Because he's a he's double agent. There. Well, that's I've often... I, that's, and in fact, actually, George, they're all in on it. Did you know, right, yeah, when you, when you hire a lawyer, when you apply for a lawyer to speak for you, number one, you've signed yourself as an incompetent ward of the state. 
you can no longer have a voice. Your lawyer has three people, positions, of who his loyalty lies to. His number one loyalty is the judge. His number two is to the people. And number three is to the incompetent moron who's just, just hired him. You never. Yes, yeah, so I, I did all my speaking for myself. It, it's the only the, way to be, John. Uh, George, the, only way to be. The case notes for the prosecutors uh, were always numbered 001. That went on right through the case. Uh, and they would not let me speak in the cases. Uh, and they would not let me record in the court. Uh, and because I didn't have a representative, I've just had to publish it all on the front page of my website. And they've paid a heavy toll for that uh, in reputational terms. But the rest of it is still totally crooked. And that, that is why in Jedburgh Sheriff Court, they hung the kangaroo on the clock tower. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I, had, I had this same conversation with um, um, Greg, uh, Greg Hallett. Right? Yeah. I says you're talking about courts. I says, what are you talking about? Because they can't hear you. I says they can't talking hear you. About them. I said I said to I said to Greg Allen, I says the courts can't hear a man. They won't hear a man. They can't hear a fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And uh, Greg turned around to me and he said, You know what? He says, Yeah, I know, because I did that one day. He said, I said to the judge, Can you hear me? And he didn't answer him. He said, Can you hear me? And he said he didn't answer him. Yeah. And he ended up walking out of the court because he can't hear a fact. They wouldn't hear him. And that's what right. that, that was Greg's words. That, those were Greg's words. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, yeah, it's, 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 it's what what I like to do is to have evidence that I've garnered myself or gathered myself mm -hmm. uh, to present that effectively. You would never be able to do it in a court because they wouldn't give you the time. They would get you back into the rows of seats again. Uh, and, uh, that's why, uh, uh, and basically, I've relied almost totally on the gods that we talk about in nearly every one of the interview. Uh, and when they started to abuse me in the courts, the lightning storms were absolutely majestic. And the River Tweed and the TV it flooded at the same time. Uh, and all of it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're my best hitting videos because the fucking lightning storms are absolutely massive, and it, you can hear the rain beating on the windows. And uh, it's all, it's all just a. Uh, and when you used to go and wait till after dark, you could see the massive lightning strikes, and it went on for months and months and months when the court hearings were still being heard. Uh, and I've never served a jail sentence other than waiting uh, to ensure that I would be attending the next court hearing. But that was, they put you in prison blocks and they do not give you anything to eat and they come and check out every hour that you've not committed suicide, which is their intention in the first place. Yeah. Carol Woods, Carol Woods, they even gave... They, they even left her a, a, a what's it in there to try and, and told her you know, a good place to hang yourself from up there. By the way, I've never heard of her. Good place to hook up. Hey, well, I've never heard of Carol Woods. Where Carol, was she? In? Carol, Carol Woods was a um, a beautiful lady. She was a social worker who exposed that the council was what they was doing with the children. She also exposed. She also caught out. Um, uh, Tony Blair's Cherie Blair. She also caught out Cherie Blair for perjury on a land grab. Yeah, so she got some big information. She was exposing a lot of uh, Freemasons. And uh, basically, she's had 19 years of absolute gaslighting and torture. They've destroyed her family. They've singled her out completely. And then um, two years ago, I think it was now, they, um, they the, the Lancaster County Council, yeah, using the CPS, because the court's got two sides to it. There's an administrative side and a judicial side, right? Yeah, the administrative side has to be the one to administer the documents if, it, if they're going to be legitimate. Yeah, now that you're talking about it, I remember it all so well. Yeah, 
Well, they, yeah. they, created, they created a fake counterfeit warrant that was never created by the court. The court even admitted the fact that it was never created by the court, but the police operated on a counterfeit document and they, 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 they grabbed her, kidnapped her on a counterfeit warrant, took her to a mental health ward, which was the or or orchard, uh, where they was full of just evil people, evil, sick, twisted, demented Mongols, really. Evil, evil people. Totally, they was caught out for the lie and they just lied no matter what. They even created, a, a, then they created a, a, a section two on her so that now they've grafted a counterfeit case to now create a section two, like they've done with John, Winnell, uh, John Patterson. You see, it started off in the magistrate courts. For anything to be, it has to have a beginning, yes? So it was magistrate courts where he started. That is where the case starts. Then they moved the case from the magistrate's court to the uh, uh, Crown Court. That's when they graft the number on and now make a real case out of it. So they make a real case out of a counterfeit case. Same as they made a real section two out of a, of a, of a counterfeit uh, section 136 that they, they kidnapped uh, Carol Woods on. And this is how the system, this is how, the, this is how they disappear us, mate. This is how they're disappearing us. And this is why I'm so, I'm, I'm, this, 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 is, this is empowering. This knowledge is empowering for everybody because at the end of the day, all you have to do is stay as king, asking the question. Because at the end of the day, that was a crime that was committed to Carol. That was a crime that's been committed to John. Your court cases, they were crimes. Because I will guarantee you, if you phone up or if you email the courts with your court, that case number that you was given, that was alleged, that alleged case number that you was given, you can send into that court and ask them for your case management file. And there it will was not one, be one. One, it did not change. The, yeah, there the, won't be. There won't be. It's, there's, there's no. That's what I'm trying to say. It's counterfeit. And this is this is how they've got you, George. How can you prove a negative? How can you prove something that's not there? That's not there. They can't prove it because they're not going to say it is or isn't. They will just fob you up and everything else. So how you actually have to do it is you have to charge them, and then they have to prove that it is there, because they can't. They can't prove it is there. And it won't. Keep it up for me. I've never had any intervention by any law officer. Uh, since I was actually jailed in uh, in the outskirts of Edinburgh, a place called Kirk Newton. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is the Earl of Morton's hub, and that is the Earl of Morton that did the murders of Mary Queen of Scots. And they've got the massive Dalmahoy mansion for that, which is now the golf course for the Open Championship, and they're one of the families that are uh, the vendetta people that have got the number plates and the identity. Uh, and incredibly, they've got, they include Palmer Tompkinson, and all of them are now having to pretend that they're dead because they're terrified by the acts of God that have happened. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're under, it's Roman rule. All roads, all roads lead to Rome, as you know. All roads lead to Rome. Yeah. All roads lead to Rome. We're under Roman rule still, and we're under the same sickness that they have, which is let those that can be deceived or are deceived be deceived. And that's what it is. So those people that can, will, they can trap you into a counterfeit, they can counterfeit, okay, and they can deceive you, then that's fine. In their books, that's their law. They can do that. And there's, there's no, they have no qualms with doing it. I mean, the police, yeah, I'm not saying that the police, all the police know, obviously some must know, but the point is the police, they're just, they, they, they've got no morals because they can't have morals because it would be an oxymoron, an order follower, an order follower does not have any morals, yeah, especially if you're doing something that you shouldn't be done, you know? that's not an order follower, that's, that's something you comes from with insiders, you don't give me an order, if, if, what you're, if you're asking me to do something and I feel it's right to be done, that's me that's telling myself to do it, not you. I don't do anything you tell me and, and you wouldn't do anything I told you to do. But the police, they do do. And, the, and the, this is the thing, you see, the police, they're following orders and an order has to, be, has to be furnished. They get paid. They get given orders and they get paid to do those orders. And then they come round and think 
that they can give us an order without paying us. Don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. They because they are. Void, I mean, if you, I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, the the test to become a policeman. I'm not knocking police like yeah, but it's you don't have to be an intelligent man to be a policeman or a woman. Yeah, that's for a start off. Yeah, and the point is, yeah, these are because of because of the programming and the way the system, the whole the whole world's worked. We've been bred into conformity. Do as you're told. And these police do as they're told. And they're, they're lacking, lacking the conscious, they're lacking the cognition of reality so that they are conscious enough to be conscientious about what it is that they're doing. And because they, they just go ahead and just do it, they, and they, you know, they've got a big awakening. That's why I revert back to the Nuremberg trials. Yeah, the Nuremberg trials stipulated just following orders did not save them and it will not save these police. Whether you're being, but whether you're following orders because you're being paid it or not, it makes no difference. Yeah, following order is not going to save you if that order is doing wrong. You did it. Doesn't matter if someone gave you the order. You did it. You you followed it through. If someone gave you an order to go and jump off a bridge and kill yourself, you wouldn't do it. So why did you do it to somebody else? Why did you get them locked up and put away for life? Why did you shoot that man because you was just no? You was following orders. You did it, and that goes with the same with the military. Because they, it's exactly the same in the military. Same with everybody. Anybody who follows orders, yeah, they lack the moral intent. You know, you should never be t no one. I mean, that's anarchy. They made they made anarchy out to be a bad word. Anarchy means no no following orders. That doesn't mean they're in chaos. It means they don't follow orders because they have they're in in a, they have the inability to tell themselves. Nobody need. I don't need a government. I can so you've myself. forgotten what I suggested yesterday, that I get my orders from the deity. To, yeah, it's from within, yeah. Mine comes from, yeah, it's too right. Absolutely. Yeah, and that is ever so reassuring. Uh, when your enemies uh, try to hunt you down, uh, the number of accidents that are happening, it's absolutely amazing. And it could be the coronavirus and the little limps, but it's... <laughs> You do, you do know that coronavirus is nothing but a common Mark, eh? That's why the lightning storms confirm yeah. that the punters have to notice what is happening around them. Yeah. Uh, and when all of the wars are run by double agents that the Rothschilds have approved and sired, all of it becomes ever so easy to track down. But that's why I'm disappointed that John has not been able to get to the National Library to find Greg Hallett's last yeah. and most powerful book, which explains yeah. how the whole of the European nobility has been diverted into being a uh, baby bearers for Rothschild. Yeah. And that does not always work properly because they're totally evil. Uh, and that is what has happened uh, ever since Queen Victoria uh, went to those places in Hampshire where the babies were sired. And then they went to Portugal, and the true king of England was sired in secret, and Peter Sellers made the movie about the whole thing. And all of it is explained in Greg Hallett's excellent writing, that even the Freemasonic murders that is Jack the Ripper is done as a Freemasonic declaration that we did this. All of the numbers have meaning, and that is the, on the... Uh, baseball game that they went to in Peter Sellers's movie, the true date for the birth of the true King of England, Marcus Manuel, was published on the scoreboard for the baseball match. And that is Peter Sellers's movie, and all of it is the, the Masonic ruling of the world and every war we've ever had with the royals tagging along for the cash and the uh, imminent replacement of the current king with an even more crooked one from the palace. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm praying, I'm praying, George, that um, with the light being shot, because, I mean, you know, let's put it, we know what Freemasonry is, yeah? I know, I, I know, I know, I know I've, known, I've known Freemasons. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure, that I, ha I do know, I've never been to any of the meetings 
things. I, I used know. to. No, I've never been to. I've, I've, I've known. I've known the, the Freemasons. I've known are not high, high up Freemasons. Yeah, but I've known. I've known Freemasons. Yeah, so I know that all Freemasons aren't bad. The point is, when is it going to be that they're going to break the break their their oath of silence? When are they going to come clean? When they're going to clean their open bear out bear all? When they're going to when they're going to stop all this? When's enough's enough? Because this is just stupid, you know. This is just stupid. This is evil. It's blatantly obviously evil. It's blatantly obviously wrong, you know. When are they going to? When are they going to? You know, all we can do is shine the light on them because that's the you know it's the embarrassment factor. And as for people saying about you know grabbing these, uh, they all want hanging and killing and all this stuff. I'm not interested in that. You know, I'm not a, to be the judge on any of these people. End of the day, they've done what they've done. They're going to have to live with it and die with it. You know, or they can make good while they're still alive and they can come clean and try yeah. and make a better world, try and make up and repent for what they've been doing. Because at the end of the day, we have to bear in mind, I didn't grow up in their shoes. I haven't gone through their, you know what I mean? From a kid, they've been programmed this way. They've been beaten and tortured and abused and all sorts, some of these people, so that you can make them so nasty so that you can release them onto the, into the world and they don't care what they're doing. That was the bit I was saying about um, Ronald Bernard. He was a, a banker, and he ended up working with the bankers. It wasn't until that he was went to Ronald, Ronald Bernard. He was a he was a Ronald banker. Her. Yeah, he was a, a Dutch. He was a Dutch whistleblower banker. Basically, he was abused as a childhood. He didn't care for people, but he went into the mafia side, and he was picked because of his abilities by the bankers. So he was taken then over from the mafia side into the into the banker side. Now the mafia, yeah, they'll kill, they'll shag women, and they've got lap dances and all this lot. But they love their children. Godfather, they love their children, yeah. But on the banker's side, they kill children. And he went to there, and he was taken to a child sacrifice, and it broke him. It broke him, and that inner child with inside him that he'd locked away because of the abuse. Through his life. So you believe in child sacrifice, but you don't believe that the Holocaust happened. I I, I, so I believe don't believe the gas. I don't believe the gas in, and I don't believe that um, it was like what it was stated. I don't believe. I certainly do not. For a start off, I can't in my head because I know simple mathematics accept that six million Jews were killed when they altered um, Auschwitz from four point one to 1.5 because they couldn't add it up. So you know that the lion, so that's reduced it from, and, and I know also that there was the, the side to where they had to have 6 million because that was where they created Israel because that's what they needed it. And they needed to create Israel as a country rather than the people. So I, I believe the people was Israel. I believe the people are. I believe it's the people. It's always been the people. You know, we're, 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 everyone's looking for a Christ to come back or Trump to come back and all this lot. Well, Christ, the Christ consciousness is with inside us all. That's the that's the epiphany, the Christ consciousness. That's when you wake up to who you are as a man, as an individual, and that you realise that the Creator was within us all the time. We are. I, you know, I've I've left my body. I know I'm not just this piece of flesh that you're seeing in front of me. I live with inside this body. I've lived many times before, but I can't remember them, and I know I won't be dying when this body goes. My, I will continue. I, I just, I just instinctively know that because i've left my body and i've listened to enough and i've spoken to enough people with the experiences of the you know out, out of body experiences astral projection and so on and so forth so i i know there's a lot i'm not even going to go into trying to explain it but i know i'm not this piece of flesh you know the the, the what operates this piece of flesh when it goes yeah this piece of flesh won't be doing anything so i don't believe yeah. that uh, i die I believe this body will die. And this is what I told Gordon Bowden, you know, because <laughs> Gordon Bowden, right, yeah, was trying to put me off talking about the Hampstead children case. And he was trying to get me to tell John Patterson. But you do sure. believe in reincarnation. It's quite difficult to think that you can be in reincarnated without the body parts. Well, this is the, this is a secondary thing, yeah, isn't it? Now, now you're talking yeah. about in cryogenics, like, and whatever, and being able to move your conscious within to another body i mean i don't know the technologies anything could happen but i do believe that you know that's that may well be possible 
but I only talk about things that you can, you know, w w w that I've experienced. I can only talk about ex experience. I can't talk about yeah, that. Sure yeah, thing. it's possible, definitely possible. There's a, there's a possibility that it could be true. But uh, anyway, John, uh, Gordon was, because um, Gordon, I'm not too sure whether Go is I think Gordon... Gordon's still with us, or has he passed on? Well, it said he is. I don't know, because you don't know anything anymore, do you, George? You know, I think he was, um, I think he'd served his purpose because I'd, I'd exposed, well, I'd, I'd pulled him up. I'd pulled him out because I'd lent him 20, well, I'd given, I'd invested 20 grand into that business for him to make um, documentaries and he never made one. And then he threw me under the bus when we caught out um, uh, Joanne Solis, who was working with him in um, the Pandora's box, the, the Pandora's box investigation team. She was, she was just trying to destroy me. Well, I've never heard any of that news before. Hey? So he tried to go private. He tried to make money from his interviews. No, no. I invested in I get I invested 20 grand for him to get camera equipment, 4G camera equipment, so that he can start making um, proper documentaries, quality documentaries. Ah. Because what what the information that was coming out was going over people's heads for the masses. The the people that know. You know, they was watching them. But the people that we needed it to get to, which was the masses, they wasn't watching it because it was just like what we're using now. We need, they need to see professional, you know, so that they can watch just like on television. They need to see it like it's on television. So I gave, I gave him the money to, to invest in this and he never, he never did. And then I, you know, there was a lot of things on court. But anyway, that's, that's good. I mean, that's something I'll not know. All I know is he threw me under the bus. He threw me under the bus, yet he, me and him was meant to be joint at the hip. We was one on this mission because I was trying to expose 788790, same as John was. And uh, there was a time when John was emailing, flitting emails, exposing about Hampstead children case between this other guy who was also calling out Gordon Bowden in, in Wales, John, uh, John Green. And um, the police went round. To, well, Gordon phoned me up and he said, I've had a visit, yeah? You know the score, Andy. Foxes and the hounds, because remember years ago, the police wanted me to work for them. Yeah? And, and, and I think it's because I'd said, you know, because the police were saying foxes and hounds, are you with us or are you against us? I said, listen, mate. And they kept saying, no one will ever find that. No one ever can hurt you. I said, listen, no fucker on this planet can hurt me more than I can hurt myself. And I said, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. So do what you've got to do, guys. You know, and then they did. They stuck me in prison for fucking team. But anyway, that's, that's by the by, right? Yeah. One of them resigned, actually. One of the coppers actually resigned. He left the force. So I, I did my bit. I got into their heads. And uh, anyway, so Gordon says, foxes are the hands, Andy. You know? He said, I've had a visit. He says, I had to go to a pub. They stripped me down to make sure, well, rubbed me all down, made sure I wasn't listening. Right? Yeah? And he says, and there, was, uh, there was discussing um, all about what John's doing and about, because um, I'd linked up, well, not me personally, but my the little group that I was with, We'd linked up 788-790 Finchley Road with uh, Ricky Dearman, who was the, uh, the, the head of the cult that the children had exposed, the Hampstead children case. Karen Irvin uh, with, um, oh, who else was it? There was some others as well. But, and all, all their connections. And we gave all this information to uh, Joanne Solis and she didn't put it on. And then she started calling me and all this lot. So anyway, so Gordon had this visit from the police, yeah, to not talk about it, right? And he said... And, and Gordon said, Andy, he says, like, tell John to, to stop sending these emails. I says, fuck off. I said, I ain't telling John to do nothing. John's his own fucking boss, man. You were, you were 20 quid, 20,000 pounds in arrears as an investment in that concept. Yeah. They, they stole it. <laughs> they stole it. Fuck. Yeah, they stole it off me, mate. Yeah, and never made a fucking thing. Never made a damn thing. But anyway, he said... And have you heard? Lord Sanderson about him. Told who? Lord Sanderson about him. I don't even know Lord Sanderson. All over the South Pacific, but especially in Scotland, and they're in the secret societies in Edinburgh with Princess Anne, and that is Bowden that runs all the uh, the uh, sewing, and uh, the Scottish Borders is famous for. Uh, for weaving and making uh, cloth and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bowden is the man that hired me as a fishing ghillie on the river, and he's a lord of the realm. 
He's one of the richest entrepreneurs, certainly in the Scottish borders. Uh, and Bowden is just next to St Boswell's, where the Borders Council uh, are the folk that uh, section me. Uh, but that is uh, how they run the syndicates. And I would not be at all surprised if Gordon is just a serf for him. I, uh, I, I believe, I mean, with, I mean, so I, he, I cog he, yeah, cognitive dissonance was not allowing me. I, I thought we was, we was on the same mission. I, I felt everything for what Gordon had told me. I thought he was wanting to expose, but that was, that was my cognitive dissonance stopping me from seeing what was blatantly. Because I, I showed you, I proved to him that uh, Joanne Solis was lying. I gave him the facts and he still threw me under the bus. He was, he was, he was being controlled regardless. He was being controlled. In fact, he even told him, he even told me in his last, um, his last, um, what's it to me? I've been instructed. I've been instructed. Those were exact words. I've been instructed. So there you go. He said it to me now. He I like it. making videos with him because he was so good at discerning the meaning of the, the sheets and the pieces of paper that told you whether or not the directors were current or they had resigned or they'd been booted out. Uh, and he was a master of that. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that bust the, bust the bank was there was a, a lassie that was the sister of a murdered man in what was the name of the street where they had terror bold and brilliant written on the side of the bus oh uh on seven seven was it euston road or something i'm not too sure uh, but that that is the the woman that was his friend i uh, actually discovered that she had dozens and dozens of corporate investments all on our own uh, and they were the Chan family that are the uh, that are still involved in the coronavirus scam because they were at that time the leaders of the World Health Organization. Jacqueline Chan was the sister, the brother was murdered by allegedly according to Gordon and the sister uh, by Stephen Hester in the banking syndicates in Euston Road. And all of that uh, used to impress me. But then when you realize that they're all name alikes, like the stories that I told you earlier today about James Hewitt is Lifford, Max Clifford uh, was the MI6 boss, and that is the killing of Princess Diana and all of the families that are involved in the cover-up of it. And that is the Earl of Holmes' daughter is now married to uh, James Hewitt, and I'm just uh, one and a half miles away from the Earl of Holmes' residence, and no one's ever come to talk to me about their family and their daughters that live in Lifford in Ireland, but Max Clifford... All of it is just stringing together of those names that are used in the debates by people like Hallett. And because he had perfect memory, he was one of the most impressive speakers I've ever heard of. But Bowden was probably second best. Yeah, he was. He he, and that was that. And, and on that point, and on that point, yeah, there's, there's other things that made me realize, yeah, because Gordon had a photographic memory, yeah, as you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was when I was asking him about situations, he's like, oh, I can't remember. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what I mean? And anything, that's no way. You remember everything, Gordon. No way. It's not that you but don't because remember. because he had you experience in the militias, I can't, was he Army or Air Force? Yeah, he was in the RAF, yeah. yeah he was in the yeah. RAF. In fact, so he off. served in South Africa, I think. And because he had that global experience, he was always came over as an impressive uh, person in the debates. Yeah. And I remember John being wowed by that too. Yeah, exactly. What, oh, this is what he gave me to wow me, look. You know, this is good. Wow. You know what I mean? Presented so that, to cost you, that cost you effectively £20,000. Yes. So it, it's for sale. <laughs> Anybody want to buy this? 20 grand. Jeez. It's cheap. 
Memories. <laughs> Memories, you could have that one. The man Andy Devine uh, exposed. The man Andy Devine got, got rid of, like, got him off. He, got, he, he disappeared after that. So what did he do as the New World Order if somebody like Gordon, who's been their irritant or their, you know, enemy, what did he do to replace somebody like him? It's not. I mean, I don't know what's happened there. I mean, there's, and there's I, don't here. Know what, I don't know what, because uh, there was uh, Peter Bromfield, Gareth Williams, David Beach, and actually, funny enough, actually, there was a, uh, a Stevie G as well. He was he was the guy that was that came over when I went over to England. I met Gordon, and uh, we went down. And funny enough, he he left. He left. So, I remember uh, Gareth Williams. He was the one that was the opium runner in China, I think. Is that right? They found him in a chest on the ocean. <laughs> he's, from, <laughs> he's from Wales, the Gareth Williams, I'm, well, the one I'm talking about. So it's funny enough, so is Joanne Solis as well. Peter Bronco, right. he's, he's a hell's angel or something like that. Well, it's, it's, that's the frustrating bit for me because I'm a professor and I think wide about things like the gods and the heavens. Yeah. Uh, and the reactions that you get when the corruption actually hits your local region. Uh, that was uh, that was a massive part in the in the tales of it. But they were all quite proud to be villainous. Uh, and like the, there are secret societies all over the region that I live in. And I believe it will be the same in every corner of this world. Uh, and that is the Bannatine Society, that is the families that were run by Sir Walter Scott, and that then gets into Hollywood uh, with all those families that started in the silent movies and things. Yeah. Uh, and all of them are still active now. And have you seen the movies about uh, Mary Queen of Scots getting uh, beheaded by Queen Elizabeth? Uh, and that has got... That has got uh, a character in it called uh, Davidson and you remember Gordon used to go on ballistic about Davidson all the fucking time uh, and that was not the ones that are historic in Mary Queen of Scots lifetime but Davidson is the buffoonish man in the movies about Queen Bess that had to give her message to execute Queen Mary uh, and he was not to delay in that task. And that is the launch of Ruth Davidson into the Parliament building in Scotland. And all of it is an obfuscation that lights up all those families that are desperately keen to get the rival families' initials on their number plates so the police can help with their assassination or banging them up and getting them into a depressed state. That is what we currently have, uh, and that is what I'm currently monitoring. And I'm really sorry that I've ruined your day, but can we start the whole of Hitler Youth story tomorrow morning again? Of course you can, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you well, want to do it? I've got to nip out tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll find out and I'll send you a message for what time. I know I've got. I'm just going to nip out tomorrow and do something, right? but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. It won't, won't take me long anyway, so just so I yeah. know at definite time. Okay, then. So thanks for all the information, and it, it's be cautious about getting dragged into the paperwork worth issues, because that is what happened to Greg, and that is, I believe, what burdened him so much. Uh, and it was all it was all like a series of argumentative discussions that they had. So as soon as you became a colonial owner like Queen Bess in England, you had to then become responsible for the taxes that were paid in America and Latin America, and all of that was in Greg Hallett's books, and all of it was the massive legal presence. And when I worked with the Indicamp people, they were all quite simple, but they, for a laugh, had the Earls of Morton that are the executioners right through Scottish history, that is the Earl of Morton that led us into World War II as the Batman for Butcher Haig. Oh, sorry, that's World War I, but he was the Batman for Winston Churchill in World War II. And they are the families 
that I used to live with in Kirknewton, in the central belt of Scotland, and that is the polo playing families that are the parents of that uh, little bitch that pretends that she's dead now, that is Palmer Tompkinson. Yeah. yeah, all of it is a mafia operation, and all the same families are in it right through European history, and it's quite easy now to pick them out, but because the world is so corrupted, and all of them are so rich with what they've done to the world, uh, it's ever so difficult to get it done logically, uh, and just using uh, case notes and pictures, but that is my intention uh, before I die, that they uh, all have to account for all the people that have died for their rich lists. Well, there it's will, a, no one, a, one thing I do know is that whatever you've done in life, you're not going to get away with it. <laughs> when I took, when I, when I became born so again, I realized who I was. You know, I had, I had to relive everything that I'd been doing in my life, you know, and you don't get away with anything, mate. So when these people become back to realizing that the spiritual, or when that inner child comes back out of them, I don't think they'll be able to live with themselves. So they're going to, you know, they're going to, they, no one gets away with anything, period. No one gets away with anything. That's, that's one thing. You don't, believe, you don't believe that goodness can spread. 100%. If if you just talk to your friends and your enemies as if they were equals, and they are just equals, everybody's at the same level, uh, and well, that's, the thing is, George. The thing is, George. If if I'm going to look for blame, yeah, I'm going to. If I'm if I was to look for blame, as the one thing that I always say, if you want to know what the problem is, go and look in the mirror, because at the end of the day, that's the same one that's allowing the problem to happen or being a part of the problem like the police, that they're going around and following orders, and military, they're following orders. It's us. We are the problem, but we, we, was, we, was, it, we was made to be the problem, which is the, the sick side to which you, I don't, which is why I do what I do. The problem so is that, is, that is the chess game concept, that there's a black side and a white side. In us all. Yeah, uh, yeah. there is. There is. And we have to, have, we have, to, we have to match the balance. Yeah, we have to. We and have you to, think uh, the gods are part of that too? Well, we. I, see, I, I believe we're all. In the earth. We're all one, in the same. We're all individual, but we're all we're all of the, we're all of the same. But we're all of our individual. It, it's, it's the it's the material and the the physical. You know, it's the what the what the flesh can be desired. Yeah, is or the mind. Yeah, if the mind can get taken, it's actually what I'm trying to say. This is the other thing to it. We. Somebody that's been doing something the wrong way for so long, yeah, he can realise that it was the right way and he could realise he's wasted all that time. Just I'm talking on the nice side of these things. Let's just say someone was doing something that he believed to be true and be right. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Take out one thing here, me, myself. I believed it at the time when I was younger. I'd, I'd, become, a, I'd become everything to be a now, a, now a fully... A, become a man, got property, got all this, and, and I was self-sufficient. I'd got multiple careers. I could do all this. Time to raise a family now, bring a child into the world. I bring a child into the world, and I, I gave, I, I believed at the time, yeah, that, you know, the vaccines, at this point in time, I believed that vaccines, because I, because I, what I've been told, that vaccines were okay. Okay, so, and I took my son to, to be vaccinated. So when I, when I came into the, into the light, realized and did my own research yeah and did my own due diligence now which is what i would have done if i was a man but i wasn't a man i just thought i was a man there's a difference when i come to realize it i had to live with that and i fucking cried my eyes out when i realized what a fucking arsehole i was for doing what i'd done to my son so i was not a man i should never have had child i wasn't i wasn't a man yet but i thought i was a man and i was a man what was it that gave you guilt for your son of give it, get taken my son. I, I told my son, I, it, my son wouldn't have had the vaccine if he had never. I mean, my son was perfectly okay. Don't go wrong. I say he's perfect okay. He would have been a lot better without the vaccine, but he's not been affected like some, like a lot of people have. But the point is, I this still. This is current vaccine, or this is way back this years is ago. Back, yeah, this is. Um, All right, yeah. This, this is like probably 18, 18 years ago. You know, before I before I knew what I knew. If only I knew then what I know now, yeah? 
I would have never have done that. I would have never have put my son into school. I would have never have done a lot of things. But at the time, at the time in, in society, I thought I was a man because of everything that needed to be what we believed to be a man was a man. I'd got, I'd got achieved all these things. I got my own property, paid free, no mortgage left on my property. I'd got jobs. I got all these things. Yeah, but that wasn't a man. That was just a programmed, you know, somebody who was good as what he was programmed to be. It wasn't until yeah. I realized who I am and what really, what reality really is, what this, how sick an asylum we live in, you know, because we live in the asylum. Yeah, we're living in an asylum. And anyone who's. Well, I don't think that, that, that is very constructive. I always try to enjoy everything I do. And even when I see my sister's initials on a on a plate gone up the high street I realize exactly why that is there and when you've got insight like that the whole world becomes a much brighter place <laughs> well yeah it's that. I mean, no listen my no my, my my life is a totally different I, 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 you can never be bored again now I'm very happy I'm very happy now I'm sad to the fact that I'm seeing what's been done to me still happening and people still haven't they haven't stepped out of of what you know they're still they're still under the trance under the spell you know they're still under the spell there's still people walking around with masks on there's still people walking straight into the slaughter there's still people going to walk straight and then take these vaccines willy-nilly because you know which is fair enough because i'm not here to say anything what i'm saying is do you really realize what pharmaceutical means maker of maker of po potions and poisons witchcraft that's what it is they tell everything's there it's all when i was a boy my mother, my mother used to make all the decisions and i was quite happy with that i don't think she had any intention of killing me or doping me up with in influenza or anything like that but all of that is relatively trivial compared to what has happened to the globe economically and in the warmongering and in the energy sector that everybody's allowed to commit genocide in and then just walk away from it for sure but i was just but that's remember, why I, I was just picking out on one little thing that that people can see people I, I like to i like to keep it where people could where the masses can see most people can see and understand you know because you yeah. know i mean they can see that as well but they can't they just i don't know i don't know they just can't see it they just can't see it it goes over their head so to say you know the world so is did you can the military the Miller sisters from Greece I don't know. are related closely. They're related closely to uh, what's her name that is now the wife of Prince Harry, Meghan. Oh, Meghan, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. in the Miller sisters' bloodline. And all of that is a massive Greek mafia operation that links into Aristotle Onassis. So five of his brothers got killed in air crashes uh, and he was, he had private armies and things and that is the legendary Greece that was owned by Zeus and Hera and they are now my inspirations. I used to be a Catholic altar boy but all of it is a massive fake up and when you learn that the Pope is the richest man on this earth, it's all totally evil. And with the, the pictures that I showed you this morning, that is the richest folk on this globe from the same families that sired Hitler and the Hitler and Stalin and uh, Chiang Kai-shek and all of them on both sides in the war are sired by Rothschild or the equivalent of. And that is Bernhardt of the Nazis. Uh, and he was the parent of one of the Tory cabinet members uh, and that was a massive debating issue when I first started becoming politically active. I can't mind what the name of the man was in the parliament <coughs> building in yeah. London. Uh, but all of it is quite facile, and you don't have to be a genius to see through it. Uh, and I used to think it was dangerous to try and see through it. But if you've got the goodwill of the gods, and you make that clear and you keep working on it, it's amazing how successful even one man can be. Absolutely. Uh, it's Absolutely, it's yeah. completely changed my mindset. I remember getting all upset about the, the, 
the law courts and the divorce and how they would only give me one case number right through the whole, it lasted for about nine months uh, and it ended with the kangaroos hanging off the court building yeah. for their joke. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've got no regrets about any of it and you learn from everything that you do and see on this earth yeah. as you age. Well, this is, uh, I mean, this is it. I but, mean, on the court side of it, because the reason why I, I went into studying the court side of it, because of, because of like Gordon Bowden and, and John and, and all the other whistleblowers that was trying to get justice. But then when I'm like looking for how we're going to get this justice, because on the common law side or the, the courts of record and so on and so forth, yeah, which is law, you know, there's nothing to enforce. There's, not, no, there's no enforcing on that. The only enforcement side is on the commercial side. Yeah. So none of that's, no one's getting justice. You know, there's been common law set up everywhere, but no one's enforcing the judgments. No one's. Well, I think in human history, any generation will ever have had justice, really. I think it's coming, George. I really yeah, do think it's coming. It's coming very, it's, it's coming fa thick and fast. Well, I Remember, think we were the luckiest generation to ever live. Absolutely. This isn't, this is. With everything that's happening, friends, it's quite dis disturbing that somebody with John Patterson's enthusiasm could have been uh, done away with like this. But if he's mind controlled now, it's a calamity for that group of people that he represents. I don't think he's. I don't think he's mind. I don't think he's mind controlled. I think. See, the thing is, yeah, it's like you. Every, everyone's got their own niche. Everyone's got their own niche, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, if you if you're missing out on some little point, yeah. Because it is, it is the Roman rule. Let's just keep it serious. It's sensible. It's a Roman rule. Let those that are deceived be deceived. And John allowed himself to be deceived because he didn't have the information. So the only problem in this world is the lacking of the information. Because if John had known to ask, he wouldn't have walked into the trap and he wouldn't be where he is now. That's the way I see it. If John had known that, he could have asked that and he could have held them to account there and then. But he didn't. He went along with it. He, he, he answered to, some, to a suggestion. He answered to a suggestion and said, hang on, the maximum law, which is the highest of all laws, says he who makes the claim has the burden of proof. So you're saying that somebody says it. Prove it. Provide me the material evidence to substantiate your claim. Let me see an affidavit and statement under the penalty of perjury. Let me see a case number. Let me see a case management file that I know that I'm in a court of record. This is a genuine court. He didn't. And therefore... What am I answering to? Is this a court? What the fuck is this? Is this Coronation Street? This is just an act. Well, if you actors. remember Greg Hallett, when he was about to take his case to the Queen, he went to Downing Street and they sent him round to the rear of the building, but the BBC cameras were pointed at him all the way through. He was talking to the police. Now the people do not know that that discussion ever took place. Yeah. And that is the Rothschild syndicate that owns the world uh, and kills without even thinking twice. And that is them that built the sun god icon around the IG Farben gas factory that had the capacity to kill the world's population 15 times over. Well, just on, a, on a, another uh, point, let me just tell you this little point. I mean, someone told me, yeah, because that's ISIS, ISIS, Horace and Set, yeah, right? Well, your son got, yeah, the ISIS, ISIS, Horace and Set. It's on the ISIS, yeah, 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 right. So, right. So, then, yeah, yeah, listen, to this, was, then. listen to this, then, George. What was ISIS? Was the sun? ISIS, and the, what was the moon? The moon. Oh, it's set, right in the set, uh, well, Horace, ISIS, Horace yeah, and Set. Yeah. I hate yes, yeah. but the, I'm just telling you this. This this is what someone said to me, yeah. And there was being deadly serious, and there was a very a, somebody who I, I I respect a lot, yeah. And he said to me that that Trump, yeah, right, matched with the ice because this is what it is because the ISIS are sick. Like I said about the Trump and I hate yes ISIS, yeah. When you add the two together, it says triumphs. This it's is what's coming. I try it, triumph. So Trump, yeah. Now you put I H S in there. So it's T R I U M P H S. Triumph. Right? So this is what's coming to the end to the set. 
to set the whole stage. So you think he's going to win? I, 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 you think he's going to win? I, I think it's been rigged for him to win. It was pretty obvious. The point is, like, win what? Number one, because there was never a presidential election. I stated back then, I stated back that, you know, it's going to come to a draw or something. They're going to have to reschedule and all that, just like they did with George Bush and Al Gore. And then they had to do the 90 days like they did in the Florida Keys. They're going to do exactly the same again. So in the 90 days, it will come back and then they'll say that Trump's won and that Al Gore did all that. Sorry, that um, Biden did all this counterfeiting. It's just, it's just a stage. It's just a fucking stage. And it's, it was yeah, it's always been the same, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, a full stage. And like I say, everyone's looking for Trump to be this. Everyone, all I'm saying is this, guys. Yeah, all I've always ever said, it's us. We're the ones that is going to save it. It's every one of us. And the knowledge is, and the knowledge is what's going to set us all free. You know. And they've they've tried everything with taking your videos down, my videos down. That's what they do. They controlled all the media. They control all the televisions. They control all the rest of it, all the output, the print and everything. They also try to take control of the internet and they've tried and they've tried and they've tried. But what they do is they regulate it. So they take your stuff off Facebook, take anything else. You know, on YouTube, you say one thing that goes against who? Yeah, the World Health Organization. One thing that goes against what they state, they'll take your video down. That is their, that is their purpose. So you cannot, you, the only thing you can say is what they say. That is but that's, the that's why it's changing now because the aristocratic families that are being condemned all of the time, you can put their mug shots on the front of your videos, like the one with Hitler Youth on it. Mm -hmm. That's quite damning. It's very impressive because it shows you that Merkel's the daughter of Hitler, and that's why they're all called Hitler Youth. And Pope yeah. Benedict. And that is Born Leisure, that is Butlins, and all of them are, uh, that is uh, Born I think, are seventh on the Forbes listings. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I worked for them on the River Tweed, which they had bought for themselves, and they owned the pub just south of the border in this town, uh, they, they were, they were, they began to commit suicide in the families uh, and that is what happened in the Windrush thing and all of it was uh, a whole Windrush as told what was the name of the politician that got involved in the immigration thing uh, it it was. It happened only last year or two years ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, the Windrush. Oh yeah, the Jamaicans. So they were immigrants in from India or somewhere in Asia. It was the Jamaicans, uh, wasn't it? It was the Jamaicans, the Windrush. But what was the name of the politician that was the founder of the? Wasn't the the. That tried to stop the immigration as a menace to our nation. Uh, no, I can't remember his name. I don't know who. It's a legend in British politics, but but all of it is the that that was the chip of Norton set, just proclaiming that every family that has got Windrush in its address, we're members of. It was as simple as that. But the man who made the speeches on Windrush to try and stop immigration was uh oh he was a legendary politician in britain uh how long ago george how old was how long, he how long ago how, how how long ago well windrush happened 18 months ago or maybe two years ago hmm. uh, and basically it's just a story that the word wind is in the address of seven mansions in Chipping Norton, and that is what we're going to laugh at. But Enoch Powell was the man that made the prediction that if you continue with these policies, uh, that God will take revenge against you. And uh, I can't mind what the 
Uh, or they would all become victims of mental health uh, mm -hmm. problems. Uh, and that was Enoch Powell's prediction about the original immigrants being allowed to come into ancient Britain. But it's all just total fascism. And when you see that Hitler Youth is run with the papal presence of Pope Benedict, uh, and all of that is the same replay of the Norman banking dynasties that were the Lubavitchers, uh, and that is all the songs that are now being sung. The councillor for Jedburgh that was part of my jailing, uh, he's Rory Stewart, and Rory Stewart used to be the governor for Iraq, and they overlap all the news bulletins like that. Max Clifford is in it because he's the man that uh, declared that uh, that the uh, the sorry he's the he's the man that was in charge of the inquests on uh, Greg Hallett's books and things, uh, and that is Lifford in Ireland is where uh, James Hewitt's family were the uh, ducal representatives of the. Uh, of the leadership team in Great Britain. And that is Max Clifford, head of M MI6, and Lifford for James Hewitt, that was the lover of Princess Diana. And no one really knows whether she's alive or dead, mm. but she would be fabulous if she could appear on the pavement somewhere and start uh, with a loudspeaker on the top of a box. Wouldn't it just? Wouldn't it just? <laughs> of the distrust boxes now. <laughs> anyway, I've wrote, I've recorded this, by the way, George. Do you want this? Is this, right, is, yeah. is, this, is this okay to go out? Yeah, I kind of think that there's anything sensational in it that we've said or done. No, yeah, it's just a good chat. Uh, Lord good Bowden, chat. Lord Bowden's a sad bastard. He's tried to do me under the Mental Health Act, uh, and he's the one that told me that when I was working as a fishing ghillie on the River Tweed which is the richest fishery in the world, mm -hmm. uh, he told me that his, her, his wife, her ladyship, from the Bowden estate, it's all wrapped into one, uh, that she would be... Uh, so Lord Bowden told me that when we were fishing, right opposite the council offices at St Boswell's, where they had me sectioned, mm -hmm. uh, that he would... His wife, her ladyship, wants to take a fish home. And I said to him, you're kidding me. In the embargo period for killing salmon on the River Tweed, where we were trying to preserve them, you want me to kill one? And he said, yes, it will be bleeding heavily. And I told him to fuck off. And that is Lord Sanderson Bowden that is likely to be the naming of Gordon Bowden as the opportunity to get us all at war with each other. Mm. And Gordon was always my best friend. I remember he told my wife to fuck off in one of the debates when the divorce was happening. But it was ever so difficult for me to work with him again after that World Health Organization scam happened. And that is what was... Uh, the murder in America of, no, sorry, in Scandinavia somewhere, there was a man called Brevik that started a serial killing operation with a machine gun in, I think it was Norway, and that is Donald Berwick that ran the World Health Organization, and all of it is obfuscation and Greg Hallett used to talk about that in the last videos that he ever made alive. And that was after a period that he himself called as an interregnum, which the Queen had called for, which is a delay in the proceedings until she makes her mind up. And that is when they killed the babies in the birthing chamber for Commoner Kate. And the boss of the New Zealand Parliament building now is the Saldana name-alike that is just like James Hewitt 
and all those names I've just used, yeah. all of them are put together by Murdoch's people and slotted in so it becomes something that is like a fashionable knowledge base. Uh, and that is the MI6 that eventually killed and murdered my wife that I loved so much because they completely reincarnated her and her behaviours and replaced her with a doppelganger uh, and they're still getting rid of the corpse at this moment in time and I'm tracking all of that and I believe in God and I believe that the God will get revenge in the end yeah, it's in his own yeah. and Harry Enfield comes into it loads of times uh, that is uh, Lily Allen uh, and Harry Enfield is her bastard parent and have you seen the movie that was made in Cape Town of her going to heaven on Jesus' cross? No, I've not seen it though. That is the that is the the Lily Allen's husband that I just told you his name. What is the name of the comic? Uh, Harry Enfield. He is from the uh, German lineages that are actually married into the feudal landlord's uh, family tree, uh, the Duke of Roxburgh's tree. He's also married, uh, in the past, the children have married Lord Beaverbrook's grandparents, and that is World War II and the massive killing of all of those innocent troops because they had to sign the draft. Donald is a draft dodger for Vietnam. Yeah, and that is on that family tree that we worked on. Uh, and all that it needs to happen is to continue to work. But while the Rothschilds are in charge and the police are not responsible for anything, nothing can change for the better. Uh, no matter how much argument you present, and no matter how shocking your pictures are, it still will not happen those guys at the top of the chain can be given a conscience is why the Rothschilds have gotten away with all the sex island scams and things that they have drawn the royal family into and made them responsible for that yeah. uh, Mandelson is the agent for Rothschild and that is Mandel House that launched the opening of the Federal Reserve Bank in America on Christmas Day in the morning for another bell Laugh. Yeah. Will you get you give me an hour and a half tomorrow sometime? Yeah. To get yeah. the the fre, uh, pretzels out of the way. Yeah. I'll do some research tonight on the families, whether they're Archduke material or whether they're Imperatos of yeah. Europe. I'll see what I can find out about them. Yeah. But that is the Bush family that fled to Germany to become. Uh, the you know the biggest scamsters. Everything that they touch, like Standard Oil, is in league with Tyson, who's still in Bavaria, yeah, and all of them are still in the families. And that Francesca woman that is in the Valkyrie movies, and her husband is played by the legendary Hollywood actor that is. He got shot in the lineup. Uh, and he's a legendary Hollywood actor for oh, it must be 60 years now Tom Cruise oh, yeah. he's in the, in the Valkyrie movie yeah. he gets shot in the lineup and Francesca is his wife I've actually met her in Dundee City Centre and she when she recognised me she bought the whole of the pub a round of alcohol and it was it was when the world soccer rugby egg competition was on mm -hmm. and the whole of the pub was full of the gunnels uh, and that is the woman that in the Valkyrie movie runs away when she hears the guns going off and her husband is getting shot okay. uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, she is born a missa and uh, sorry, she is the family that is married to uh, 
Fritz Tyson. And that is the Tyson and the launch of the boxing champion. Yeah. Uh, all of it is the biggest uh, steel manufacturers in world history. And they, with Bush, are the launch of Standard Oil and everything that happened to America after World War II was over uh, and before it began. And they paid Hitler in the stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I wish well, I'd met thinkers like you earlier in the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a message anyway, George. In, the, in about in the, within ten minutes, I'll send you a message to let you know what time tomorrow. Okay. Good lad. Thank you for your All help. Right. God bless, George. Cheers, Andy. Take care, mate. Bye bye now. And time now is uh, twelve minutes past eight on the fourteenth of January, twenty twenty one. Bye bye for now. Keep smiling.